Hello and welcome. In this video we'll be repairing a 55 inch LED Vizio flat screen TV. You can see here this is the back of the TV with the applicable mark, model numbers. Okay, so before we begin I want to real quick give my own word of advice on taking your TVs apart like this. Obviously if it's still under warranty take it back to the store. If it's really old or other parts of it are broken and and you would just really and you have the money and you were thinking about buying a new TV you might do that too um, because this is kind of a gamble working on televisions like this uh, when you do it for yourself and you're spending your own money on it. Working in a shop which is where I learned is a little bit different. Um, with that being said, if you're still ready to dive in, I would also like to say that uh, you know, you do this at your own risk. And I used to be a professional at this, and I don't want to say or do anything to put anybody else in danger. So just take that as it is, and. Let's get started. So there are several screws that go around, including in here, in these deep wells here, and back underneath. Once you take all those apart, the plastic basically just pops off. Now I laid that down on its face in order to do that. Once the top was removed, while it was laying on its face, I installed a stand in order so I could stand it back up and work on it. Now, the television is made up of basically five pieces. You've got the screen, which I'm also including the LED lights and behind. The, those, those things are really not worth fixing. Um, or at least not worth working on, especially if you don't have access to the parts. If you keep your screen or a large portion of the hardware gets damaged, you're better off just buying a new TV. But your other four parts on your back here on the circuit board are this part, which is your power supply, the main power supply generating unit for the TV. Incoming power is here from the AC port here. These are the, all the outcoming powers that run off to the rest of the TV that run the rest of the, board, uh, the TV. This is your main logic unit, the main CPU brain of the TV. Um, I didn't even take the cover off that because I don't even want to mess with that at all. The power supply, the brain, and this unit here is a driver board, I believe, as that's how the terminology for it, for the lights. It's what activates and the power for the lights. This long ribbon cable runs completely under and hits this side so the lights work together. Underneath this panel here is the control board. The board where all the inputs and there's another processor there is where, and this is where I suspect our problem lies. Now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the issues that we're having. You'll notice that the Vizio light is white. Right down there. And it should be amber. It should be an amber orange color until you turn on the TV. So if I press power on the main board, you notice it gets a little bit lighter, which is proper, and the TV boots up. Still suck it. Channel 27. Nice. 
you can see we can change through the inputs as well. And it appears though it's changing. But when I turned the TV on the next morning after we had had the electrical storm, uh, switching to the HDMI ports did nothing. And I had all my inputs were okay, but I didn't have any anything to show on the television. And then I also, when I turned the TV off to just power cycle it, I noticed that the light stayed white and it did not go amber. You told me right away that there was something wrong. Okay. So, I've explained the issues with the TV. Now I'll explain my logic, my reasoning behind uh, replacing the board that I did. For one, the TV still turns on. It still turns on and it still operates to an extent. There's just I'm just missing some of the features. Some of the abilities go to the HDMI ports. The audio from the tuner. When you have cable going directly into the tuner, you still have video but no audio. And, there are, and those things lead me to believe a, a, a certain few things. Number one, the video or the light driver board here is probably okay. Um, you know, if there was something wrong with it, then you would probably have light issues. Maybe if you would lose half of the uh, screen, let's say, for example. If, you, if that was your issue, then it's quite possible that that, the board, that would be the, the problem. Um, if the TV didn't turn on at all, if you plugged it in and you had no light on the front, amber or white, and you had basically was dead, no uh, operation at all, I would definitely suspect the power supply board. Um, probably suspect it straight away. Here you have underneath this cover is a control board. Now, since my issues lie in the HDMI uh, ports and the audio from the tuner or from the TV period, I assume all the audio is messed up. Um, it could, that leaves me basically with this control board and the logic unit. Now, I suppose that I could have problems with certain power outputs. Maybe part of the power supply is, is, is burn up or, or not operating, but, but other part of it is. And the way we're going to test that, I have a multimeter, and I'm going to test that. The, uh, I'll show you how to do that. You don't necessarily need a digital multimeter. It makes it a whole lot easier if you do, but you can use an analog meter. I'm not going to go on into how to use an analog meter. You just have to do that on your own. Like that right there so you can see. Yeah, you should be able to see that. Okay, so we go to volts. DC. And I have my probe has a little ground my ground probe has a little red clamp. See this slits right over the top of that. They're pretty handy. And I'm just going to clamp that up to some part of metal on the machine to get a ground. Now, you just have to take my word for it because the camera won't get in here tight enough. But the board is labeled, which is nice, right along down the side, on the, written directly on the board of all the, prop, the voltages that should be there. Okay. All right, here we have 5 volts, it's 18 volts. Now, I also happen to know, because I've already traced out the wires, that these two wire bundles here, they run down and over and back over to the uh, 
light driver board, as I'm calling it. And that this connector here, the small one, and the one below it, that these two actually run and power the control board here. Um, which I still believe that this is where our issue is, but I suppose that the power supply maybe is not feeding power to the control board like it should be. So that's what we're going to test. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the TV on. Okay. It is on. So let's start checking some voltages. Let's start off with this 18 volt line right there. See the meter right there, 18 volts. Let's go ahead and check this other pin just to be sure. 18 volts. Okay, and we got, oh, there's a 12 volt line right there. 11.8. Oh. TV shut off. You have it on the RGB input, it'll turn off after a certain amount of time. Here, go to HDMI. Just gotta keep it on. Figures. There's like 12 volts there. 12 volts there. No volts there. Oh, it's only present on those two pins. There's two pins here. Looks like that. Right there, five volts. And there, five volts. So, getting all the proper voltages. It appears that the computer is sending the commands to change inputs. I still think that this is the control board is going to be the problem. I'm almost positive. I'm so positive that I actually have already ordered one. It is right here. It's already came in. Now the number that I use to order this board, there's a, there is a number written on the board itself, but you don't want to use that. What you want to use is this number from that sticker right there. And it's hard to say, but it's 36550032015. Zero, this just says 4H, so it's probably like a revision 4 or something of that nature. One more time, 3655-0032-0150, and that's the part that you're going to need to be ordering. And that's only going to work for this specific TV. Now, we check the model number before we start it. If you don't have a model number TV, then you have this TV exactly, and you do not want this board. But there'll probably be a similar board on your TV if you're just looking at this for some kind of a reference, which is a good idea. I do that often. If you have one that's close to this, then it'll probably be really close, and you just need to change the part numbers up. But I will list the model number exactly from this TV and the part number for that board exactly of what I ordered. For now, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the power cable from it, and I'm going to let, wait and let all the capacitors from inside the machine discharge, and then we'll come back. Okay, welcome back. We've waited a good 10 to 15 minutes and let this simmer down. Now, since I've already ordered the part, it would stand to reason that I probably have already tried the part to see that it is the one that it, what the problem was and I, spoiler alert it is so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to remove and replace the boards and then we'll fire the TV back up I'm sure it will work as it is supposed to first thing you take that ground cable out of the way I've already removed most of the screws I've left just two in and the one is for to hold this power connector up. I'm 
want to be sure to do that because you can see this guy just kind of flops around. Probably, probably not good. And we take the screw. board and we're going to go ahead and start unplugging cables these three down here are all different sizes so there's really no need to mark them because they can only go in one direction and be careful when I did this the first time I accidentally unplugged this little bitty cable which operates this little circuit board here which is part of the remote control sensing and you're going to want to not mess that up Unplug the main power cord that this connector is the same as that connector, the other end of it, I should say. This is the speaker wires to get rid of the speakers, and this is your secondary or your 18 volt line that was this smaller connector here. Just realized here. Now these two lines here, bunch of wires, and they all feed up to the logic unit. And this is going to be how the computer talks to this processor here, which I'm not real sure what it does. I'm sure it's probably going to be your encoder for encoding your tuner stuff and your HDMI stuff, RGB, and changing it into a format that you can be seen on the TV probably also does the uh, sizing of the TV just I was guessing I don't really know but I do know this one doesn't work now I've already removed the screws there's one two three four five six seven eight total screws I removed them all except this one just to hold it up so you can see it There she goes. Now I've checked that board over and over, and I can see no visible signs of damage. But it went down after the electrical storm, so I'm certain that's what it is. So out with the old, and in with the new. Now something I didn't show you is this little sideboard here. After we get this board remounted, then this actually goes on first. Or I should say last, and comes off first before you take anything else apart. Okay, now that we have the board in, start reconnecting cables. Go in one way, don't force them. Okay, here pretty delicate. Just make sure, make sure that you get these in real good. interface cables. Now I wouldn't leave this like this. I want to plug it in and make sure that it works again and prove that it was actually that was the culprit. But I don't want to just let that just hang there. I don't know. It just bothers me. I guess they're wrapped up back here. But it just bothers me. It looks just dangerous. So I'm just gonna for fun. It's so fun. 
throw a screw right there to keep that mounted up. All right, let's see what happens. Throw some power on. Let me click. Let's come around and look what we got up here. Imagine that. Nice, pretty hammer light. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Ha! Ah, now we're cooking. Yep. New setup procedure. Looks like that's got it. Okay. That's basically it. Thanks for watching. Um, all I want to do now is tighten all the screws up, put the back cover back on. Um, basically, the opposite of taking it apart and remount it. Now you may ask yourself why I'm going to do all this without testing it. I really don't have an input to plug into it without taking all my stuff apart, PlayStations and whatnot, and I'm not going to do all that. I am relatively sure, just by the condition of that amber light, that this has repaired it. Um, all my bolts just look good, you know. I think that's going to do it. Like I said, thanks for watching. Leave some comments.